After a bear cub begs for fish in a remote spot in Alaska, a fisherman decides to follow it and discover the secret it's guarding. Three days later, high up in the mountains, he saw something completely unbelievable. It took Jess 15 minutes to land the fish and wade back to the riverbank. He noticed the bear cub that had been hanging around him all morning. It was edging uncomfortably close to him now, its eyes fixated on the salmon Jess had caught. The cub concerned him. Its mother may be nearby, and that could mean a whole heap of trouble. Mother bears were notoriously protective over their cubs and wouldn't tolerate a human presence if they felt their cubs were threatened. Jess fiddled with the hook for a few seconds, removed it from the salmon's mouth, and looked for the cub again. It startled him. The young bear was now three feet away, its neck stretched out, and its nose sniffing eagerly in the general direction of the salmon in Jess's hands. On the spur of the moment, Jess tossed the salmon a few yards away. The cub dashed after it, snatched it up, and made a beeline for the woods. This caught Jess by surprise. The cub had been around for the entire morning. It was clearly not shy, yet the moment it had the fish, it ran off. That was odd behavior, even by bear cub standards. The next morning, Jess started his journey back to the river with a song in his heart and a whistle on his lips. Alaska was truly America's last frontier. That's why he loved to fish the rivers here. The whole area was one vast expanse of untouched wilderness, age-old forests, majestic mountains, and rivers teeming with salmon. And these pristine wildlands served as unparalleled habitats for a diverse range of wildlife. There were eagles, salmon, caribou, and grizzly bears. It was the land before time, untouched, unspoiled, and unsullied. When he reached the river, Jess sat down on a rock to drink in the beauty of his surroundings. Then he removed his flybox, stared at the water for a while, and tied a classic willy gun to the end of his line. This fly had delivered for him time after time, and he had faith it would do so again today. He selected a spot where two side flows created a small rapid, started his back cast, and dropped the fly exactly where he had aimed. Jess was about to lift the fly for another cast when something caught his eye. It was a movement in the trees on the edge of the forest to his left. He dropped the tip of his rod and focused on the spot. At first, there was nothing but the slight sway of the branches and the breeze. But then, he saw it. The cub was back. Jess's first instinct was to check the area for the cub's mother. Yesterday was uncomfortable enough with the cub around, but if it had enjoyed the salmon he had gifted it and decided to bring its mother to share in the joy, it would spoil his fishing and then some. With the cub around, Jess wouldn't be able to relax as he wanted to. He'd have to remain vigilant throughout the morning. He cast his fly again and dropped the willy gun in the perfect spot again. Three seconds later, a salmon hit the fly like a freight train. Jess's rod bent down and his reel screamed. This was what life was all about, he thought. Beautiful surroundings and a line with a fish on the one end and a fool on the other. Jess grinned as he brought the fish to the bank. He was happy, really happy. Happier than he had been for a while, he realized. Like it did yesterday, the cubs started approaching Jess the moment he stepped onto dry land with the fish he'd caught. You're a little beggar, aren't you? He said to the cub. Do I look like your local fish market? Jess extended an arm and dramatically waved it at the water. That's your larder. Fish for yourself. The cub flinched when Jess waved his arm but didn't budge. Its enormous eyes were fixated on Jess's hands as he removed the fly. He was about to slip his salmon into the creel when he thought the better of it. Instead, he dropped to his haunches and held the fish out by the tail. Come on, he said to the cub. If you want it, come and get it. The cub hesitated. Its eyes flitted from the fish to Jess's face and then back to the fish. It came forward slowly, carefully, nose extended and lips curled slightly. Then it snatched the salmon from Jess's outstretched arm, turned on a dime, and bolted for the tree line. This time, Jess decided to follow the cub. It was really odd behavior. The cub was comfortable enough to hang around with him while he fished. It had no qualms about approaching him and coming within a few yards of him. And now it was obvious it would take a fish from his hand without flinching. But the cub refused to eat on the riverbank. Any other bear would have grabbed the fish, dashed a few yards away, and devoured the salmon on the spot, especially if it was hungry, which Jess assumed this cub was. No, something else was going on with this young bear, and he aimed to find out what it was. He managed to follow the cub into the woods. 
The youngster wasn't exactly making it his business to walk silently upon the Alaskan soil. Oh no, it crashed through the underbrush, jumped over trees and logs, and maintained a brisk pace. It was a bear cub on a mission. Following 50 yards behind, Jess was already blowing hard. What came naturally to the cub took a toll on his 40-year-old human body. Eventually, after following the cub for almost an hour, Jess gave up. He was dressed in his fishing garb. Waders, boots, a flannel shirt, and a fishing jacket with a miscellany of flies, reels, lines, tippets, and other odds and ends in the pockets. Firstly, he sounded like a clown car as he made his way through the woods like this. Stealth wasn't an option. And secondly, if he was going to follow the cub, he'd be better off in hiking gear. More intrigued than before, Jess headed back to the river. Tomorrow would be another day, he told himself, and when he came down, he'd be better prepared. If the cub appeared to beg for fish again, Jess would be ready and prepared to follow it through the woods. Jess was down at the river before first light. When dawn broke, he cast his first line. Thirty minutes later, he'd caught his first salmon of the day, which he carefully placed in the creel to save for the cub. But the cub was nowhere to be seen, but he was ready. He wore a pair of running tights under his waders and a loose, comfortable shirt under his fishing vest. A pair of hiking boots were waiting next to his rucksack 30 yards from the riverbank. The plan was to slip out of the waders and the vest when he spotted the bear, give it the salmon, and then take off after it when it headed for the trees. By mid-morning, the bear cub hadn't made an appearance yet. Perhaps it had been a game for two days, and now the cub had found something else to amuse himself with. But the cub didn't disappoint. Jess was just sitting down to eat the sandwiches he'd brought for lunch when he saw the cub. It approached from the other side of the woods this morning and looked as if it had had a rough and tumble in the undergrowth somewhere. The cub's fur was a tangle of twigs and small vines. It looked like someone living on the streets who hadn't combed their hair for a week. Jess was alert now. His plan was about to move into action. First, he slipped out of his waders, then his fishing vest. He pulled on his hiking boots and pulled the laces tight. Only then did he open the creel and show the cub the salmon. The cub immediately started sidling towards Jess. Its posture was the same as it had been the past two days, head low, nose extended, and eyes fixated on the fish. As he'd done the day before, the cub took the fish from Jess's hands and sprinted for the tree line. This time, however, Jess was ready for action. He gave the cub a head start and then took off after it. You're quite nimble for such a clump of fat and fur, Jess mumbled under his breath. Thirty yards ahead like a gymnast, the cub first sailed over a fallen tree trunk, then ducked under another, then swerved to avoid an overgrown rock. The cub made it look like one smooth choreographed movement. When Jess reached the spot, he labored over the bull, bent painfully under the next one, and almost ran into the overgrown rock. He was struggling, while the cub made it look as if it wasn't even trying. All the while, they were heading deeper into the mountain. Already, the river was nothing more than a little sliver of tinsel in the distance below. The next moment, the cub was gone. Jess stood there for a while and listened. The cacophony the cub had caused while plowing through the trees was gone. The noise had been replaced by an eerie silence. Jess was on high alert now. This kind of silence in wild places inevitably meant something big was on the prowl. When the crepitations of the insects suddenly stopped and the birds fell quiet, something was up. And this was exactly what was happening all around him. His primal brain had now taken over Jess's entire bodily function. The part of him that initiated fight-or-flight responses urged him to retreat slowly, to go down the way he came, and to do it quickly. But Jess resisted the urge to turn and run. Instead, he stood and waited. Less than a minute later, he would regret that decision. A fully grown male grizzly bear exploded from the trees at the spot where Jess had last seen the cub. He came at Jess like a freight train, except that this particular locomotive was 600 pounds of fury and killer instinct. The urge to turn and run became overwhelming, but the logical part of his brain told Jess that that would mean certain death. If he ran now, he would trigger a hunting response in the bear, and then it would pursue him relentlessly for as long as it took. No, Jess thought. Better to stand my ground and make a retreat when the moment's right. So he did. He faced the grizzly's charge with all the courage he had. The bear closed in rapidly, 40 yards away, then 30, then 20, and it all happened in seconds. The giant bear slammed on the brakes just a few feet away, skidding to a halt on all fours. 
It reared up, twitched its lip, and roared at Jess. Still, Jess stood still as a statue. The bear went through the motions. He was making a point, it seemed. He dropped back onto all fours but slammed his forepaws into the earth with a loud thud. It sounded like a primeval drum. It stepped back, charged forward a few feet, screeched to a halt, and reared again. It repeated the ritual another three times and then backed off. This gave Jess the gap he had hoped for. He now had room to maneuver and retreat. At first, he walked backward, feeling each step with the heel of his foot before he put his weight on it. When it was clear the bear had no further interest in pursuing him, he started sneaking looks over his shoulder to see where he was going, and a few minutes later he simply turned and walked away brusquely. Two hours later, Jess was back at the riverbank where he had left his backpack, waders, and fishing vest. He sat down, drank some coffee from a flask, and burst out laughing. He thought about the cub and became even more intrigued. This was way more adventurous than he had bargained for. Why did the cub come down to the river and beg for fish from him every day? And where was its mother? And why did it dash away when he gave it fish instead of eating it right there? So many questions, Jess thought. We'll try again tomorrow. The next day started in a similar vein. Jess was down by the riverbank before dawn and settled down to wait for the cub. He first spotted it at around 11 in the morning. It was moving slower this morning, as if it had been injured and it was way more skittish than it had been on the previous occasions. The cub approached slowly and then sat down a small distance away. Today is the day, Jess said softly. Today, little bear, I discover your secret. Like the day before, Jess changed his clothes. Then he opened the creel and held the salmon out for the cub. The cub came closer but was moving much slower than he had done before. He was favoring his one hind leg and swaying from side to side as if it was desperately uncomfortable to move. Still, it came right up to Jess, took the fish, and waddled off toward the trees. There was no running today, no mad dash for the tree line. Just a determined, if somewhat labored, waddle. The going was easier today. The cub wasn't dashing through the woods like a banshee. The going was slow and methodical. Beneath the pines, the undergrowth was getting thicker. It tugged and tore at his skin. While the bear cub could simply slip through beneath it, Jess had to plow through. It broke his momentum. They came up to a large rocky plateau. From here, they could see the valley below like Jess had never seen it before. The small bear slipped onto a wildlife path and Jess almost lost it. He reminded himself to focus. He'd come too far to lose the cub now. Then, it all became clear. Tearing free from the undergrowth, Jess followed the cub and ended up before a large overhanging rock. It seemed like the entrance to a cave, but the mouth was completely overgrown. The cub had used a small opening in the vegetation to squeeze into the cave, and then it was gone. Jess weighed the odds. If this was a cave, and it certainly looked as if it was, there was no telling what he would find inside. There could be a mother bear lurking in the darkness inside. If there was, he'd stand no chance. Jess dropped to his haunches to peer into the opening. It was too murky inside to see anything, and the cub was gone. He unclipped a small flashlight from his hiking belt and shone it at the back of the cave. There was movement in the one corner, but the light wasn't strong enough for him to see what it was. Jess was in two minds. This cave held the cub's secret, and he was dying to know what it was. Heck, he deserved to know what it was. After all, he'd spent three days and faced a full-grown male grizzly in his attempts to find out, and now here he was, seconds away from solving the mystery. His motto had always been, if you don't know, then you're not meant to know. Leave it alone. But today was the day he was finally going to break that rule. Jess started pulling handfuls of underbrush from the cave mouth. When the opening was big enough, he started crawling through. Thorns and branches held onto his shirt like ghostly fingers. Three minutes later, he emerged on the other side of the tunnel through the shrubbery. The rock roof above him was high enough for him to stand up. He fumbled with his flashlight and shone it to the back of the cave again. He was still jittery about the possibility of a she-bear lurking in the shadows and ending his life at the moment she spotted him. But there was nothing there, just a few moving shadows in the one corner. Jess approached slowly, one foot at a time. The scene in the back of the cave came into focus. The bear cub wasn't alone. He had two siblings with him. They eyed him suspiciously. All three were healthy. Their coats were shiny and they were plump as bear cubs should be. No hardship here. Suddenly, 
Jess understood the cub's secret. The mother was nowhere in sight. In all probability, she had fallen victim to poachers, an illegal bear trap, or just one of the accidents that happened in this kind of territory. This one cub had taken it upon himself to share his food. These cubs, Jess realized, were raising themselves, and by the look of things, they were doing swimmingly. With the knowledge that he had just witnessed something remarkable, Jess retreated from the cave. These cubs didn't need his help. There was no earthly reason why he should interfere with them and leave a human imprint. Better they stay wild. But he would make sure to keep a couple salmon for his daily visitor from now on. Stories like these always remind me of the little unseen dramas that play out in the wilderness. Things that we may never be aware of, but that make up the difference between survival and death nevertheless. If you have a similar story about a secret an animal seemed to be guarding, tell us in the comments. We'd love to hear it. For now though, we're out of here. Catch you in the next video.